What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darren with Darren the Dev and in this video we're going to talk about my thoughts two years after coding boot camp. If you guys are brand new to the channel, if you're into tech, entrepreneurship, coding, startups, anything like that, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. That's all we talk about here on this channel. And it's literally been exactly two years today since I dropped the very first video on this channel, guys, when I was going to my orientation for coding bootcamp. My very first day was two years ago today, which is crazy to believe. And I just wanted to reflect here a little bit. The last video, one year after coding bootcamp, has done really well on this channel. So I wanted to do another video two years after coding bootcamp and just talk about some of the things that I have noticed and learned and can tell you guys that I am still doing two years after coding bootcamp. So let's go ahead and jump right into it with the very first thing. The first thing I have on the list, guys, is that I am still learning design patterns, all right? So this is something that you guys are more than likely gonna learn in Coding Bootcamp or probably just get a taste of. You likely won't go very much into it because bootcamps don't really have the time to teach you design patterns. And it's something that I've, I've noticed that you have to write a lot of code and kind of just start getting annoyed with the same problems over and over again or just work in a lot of terrible code bases or work with a lot of other people on a lot of, like I said, just inefficient code to really understand the benefits of design patterns and especially when to use them. So even when I came out of coding bootcamp after having my first job, I would say even after studying design patterns and everything, I wasn't the best at implementing them. And to this day, I'm still getting better at that. Some of the ones that we work on a lot or that we use at work are the factory pattern, the singleton, and also the decorator pattern. And then there's a lot of other ones that we use kind of like the builder pattern and the repository pattern. But those are just the really, really common ones. Um, if you guys want to go do more research on what those patterns are, it's something that's just ongoing um, every week. Like we have like lunch and learns where we're actually going over design patterns. Um, so it's something that even myself, you know, the mid levels and even senior developers, these refreshers and these sessions where we still go over these things, talk about them, different ways of implementing them, benefits and pros and cons. Like it's an ongoing, evolving learning process. So I'm still learning design patterns two years after coding bootcamp. That's the first thing. The second thing on the list is that I have noticed that junior developers are able to write code but mid-level developers are able to write good slash clean code. Even when you come out of bootcamp, you're not, you're not good at coding usually at all, but you're still light years ahead of somebody who has no idea about computers or programming code, anything like that. So I think it's important to understand that once you're able to pretty much take a basic idea and write a, a functioning application, if you can take business logic or at some sort of requirements and you can turn it into a functioning application online somewhere that people can use even if it looks terrible and it's not the best code design um it you know it doesn't even have to be like secure and all these different things right let's see let's even say you're saving like plain stream uh passwords to your database something like that that but as long as the application works and it's up and everything, like you're a junior developer, you're ready to apply for jobs if you can take requirements somebody gives you, right? Basic ones, nothing like crazy, nothing intense. If you can take basic, like, a, you know, a CRUD logic type application and you can build that and you can get it deployed and you can have people using it. I think you're a junior developer, clearly. You can go apply for jobs that fit kind of that, that role and you're, you know, um, you're, you're more than qualified. But mid-level developers, um, when you're, once you're in that junior developer phase, the mid-levels and the difference between them is that they're usually very, very strong in the language. Whatever language it is that they're considered a mid-level at, they know a lot of the advantages of that language. They know the libraries, they know the shortcuts, they know how to write very, very clean code, how to refactor things, use these design patterns that we just talked about. So pretty much when you're in that junior developer stage, when you're looking to you know, get from you know, point A to point B going to mid-level, I think that's, that's kind of where you focus. Focus on getting stronger at that language, learning how to write more optimized solutions. How do you make things better? So you can write working code, great, but how do you, again, use whatever language that you know how to use uh how do you use that language like as most efficiently as possible most effectively as possible write the most readable most clean most reusable code um and then that's you know kind of following that process i think that's how you get to the the mid-level stage so that's the second thing on the list is that's the main difference between junior devs and and mid-level devs 
So number three on the list, guys, is that no two developer jobs are the same. And so I'm on my second developer job now. So I know you guys are probably like, yeah, Darian, duh, no two developer jobs are the same. But I'm on my second developer job now. And I wanted to put this one in there because I think, so we use the term very loosely, software engineer, software developer, uh, whatever, front end developer, uh, web developer. Like we use all these terms very loosely and we kind of like assume that they all involve the same things, which they do to an extent. But the roles themselves and even the titles um, can be so different no matter where you're at, like from company to company. So like we were just talking about in, in the last point that if you're a mid at Google and you're a mid somewhere else, those roles and those responsibilities and the job title is going to look extremely different. <laughs> when we're using these terms and we're, and we're looking up job titles and you guys are, you know, on the job hunt and everything, just understand that every every role is going to be just totally different you're going to work the, the teams are going to be structured differently the workflow is going to be differently the software development life cycle is going to be different your scrum process is likely going to be different um again just just everything the tools that you use are likely going to be different um so you are doing the same things usually the same processes and it all usually is going to uh, involve code and obviously version control and things like that. But I'm saying that the role and the tools and the responsibilities and the workflow is gonna be so, so different from every single job. And I think that's why people switch jobs so much in tech because when you switch jobs, you're getting a whole new world of experiences, usually a whole new world of tools and things like that. So um, yeah, that's just how you kind of learn and, and soak up so, so much new information and kind of stay, stay fresh and see what people are learning and using and doing in the industry is by kind of getting those new jobs and seeing what's out there so um no two jobs are going to be the same they're going to be extremely different and so that always it kind of encourages you hopefully to kind of stay adaptable stay learning stay curious uh because you're going to have to do that at jobs like no matter what you did at one job you might do something completely different in the same job title at a different job number four now becoming a developer after coding bootcamp opens the doors for a lot of other roles and job opportunities and it doesn't mean there's not other ways to get into tech after coding bootcamp or even without coding bootcamp you can go take certifications you know cloud certifications uh or just go through again other types of programs they don't necessarily have to be coding bootcamps there's other it programs you could take to kind of break into the software or it industry but you know when you put all that time in at coding bootcamp to learn how to code you know, it's kind of a bummer when you don't necessarily get a job offer that is to be a software developer or to still work with code. Like if you go through coding bootcamp and then you take a job in tech, but it doesn't involve code, then you might end up losing the skills that you learned in coding bootcamp. You know, if you go six months, you know, not even six months, maybe, you know, two months, three months without coding in a new role and you're not using it, um, it, it could really, you know, end up making it kind of a waste of time. They say that coding bootcamp graduates are the hottest, like most in demand when they first, first, first graduate because the employers know that all that knowledge is right here. It's like right in the front of your head. So when you get a job as a developer after coding bootcamp, it really sets you up. Even if it's just one job that you have, it really sets you up to kind of explore other options. So even if you get that developer job and you realize that you're not really good or it's not something that you want to do, there's a lot of other ways that once you get that experience, you can leverage that coding experience, that developer job experience to break into other roles like project management, Scrum, uh, Scrum Master. You know, there's like a lot of other roles. It could be QA, BA. There's a lot of other roles in tech that you could get into um, just from having a little bit of software engineering experience or software development experience. So not settling for a job that doesn't let you code, you know, could really benefit you in your career in the long run, because just having that one, you know, coding job experience could really make you um, a more highly demanded, whatever it is, because you have some sort of really, really technical experience. So even if you don't do hands-on coding technical stuff, um, you could still be really in high demand in project management because you have the technical experience. All right, last thing guys, let's wrap this up. The last thing is that you can't be complacent at your first job when you get it after coding bootcamp. All right, so that's that's the, the most major thing I can look back on and just reflect is that, you know, once you get your first job, you guys just don't, don't get too 
it's exciting it, it is and it's a it's a huge milestone you know you've gone through this entire coding boot camp and this was the whole point of it was so you can change your career you can break into it and you can become a software developer and get that coding job at the same time you cannot be complacent and think that you know it's not your employer's job to teach you anything it's not their job to make sure that you grow it's not their job to you know make you better so at the end of the day you're going to be asked to do whatever it is they need you to do and you know whatever doesn't fall outside the scope you know whatever falls outside the scope of what you do there um you know that's that's pretty much on you and your own time to still continue studying building learning exploring new things and just keeping yourself fresh and relevant like i said because every job title is going to be completely different every company is going to be completely different even if you're still a software developer mid-level uh, junior developer, whatever it is, but the things you'll be working on, the way they like things being done, the technology they use, the tools are going to be completely different. So you got to always just want to grow and learn new things, be taking courses and just and just staying fresh and trying new things. So you can be complacent when you get your first job, even though it's a huge goal. I'm not saying don't celebrate it, enjoy it because it is a huge journey, guys. But um, I just wanted to share these things like these tips with you guys are the things that I reflected on like two years after coding bootcamp now. But again, coding bootcamp changed my life, guys. Um, and so for anybody thinking about going to coding bootcamp or uh, if you just started like coding or something like that, check out the description box down below. I'm giving away my free intro to coding bootcamp course. It teaches everything I wish I knew going into coding bootcamp. Uh, completely free. It only costs your email address. So go ahead and check that out. There's also a description down there for the free private Facebook group where I give away pretty much all the other resources that I don't put in the description box of these videos. So um, yeah, guys, let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know if you are going to coding bootcamp or if you guys have graduated and you guys have some thoughts about this, some stuff to add to the list. Let me know. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you guys subscribe. This is Darian with the end of the day. I'll see you guys next video. All right. Peace.